This is The Walking Dead Destiny Season 4, and today we're going to be finishing off this absolute masterpiece of a game. And we start off as Daryl with the simple quest of killing the walkers at the fence. And it's fair to say Daryl is taking this job very seriously. They keep piling up, that fence will come down. Yeah, well, it is inevitably going to come down. And if you think this mission is too easy to be kicking off a season, let me assure you it is not. I've also got to move around piles of shite. Stab, stabby. Oh, so much admin to do in this fence clearing shit. We clear out our 12th and final walker, and the game does its favourite thing. Fade to black. And it's probably quite difficult to sum up what's going on in like five slides of a PowerPoint presentation, but let me give it a go. This is a piece of cannon fodder we picked up from Woodbury. Apparently he gets a bit hot in the night and he has an addiction to cheap ass energy drinks. Oh, wait, look, hang on, he's now a walker. And I bet you didn't know this about the virus. It grows out your hair and gives you a fresh set of claws. Go to Black Sea Hall. Okay. Oh, look, Glenn's coming with me. Hey, Glenn, we haven't had a team up yet. <coughs> All right, Glenn, Jesus Christ, but apparently Glenn's not a fan of teaming up with Daryl, and I've never been more disappointed in my entire life. I've then got to take out our first eye-bleeding walker. Daryl then has to save everybody's life. And I'm sure we can all agree that's a lot of pressure to stick on a man. They got me! Help! All right, mate, I'm trying to help you. My God, these people are so impatient. Grab a ticket and join the fucking queue, son, all right? I successfully saved the cannon fodder, and I bet you didn't know this about Daryl's crossbow. It can hold two bolts in the chamber? Having picked up a second piece of cannon fodder, I've got to escort them both upstairs. But with them both safely upstairs, the game doesn't progress. And it's one of those many moments where I'm like, right, is the game glitched, or am I doing something wrong? Well, shock and horror, it turns out I was actually doing something wrong. There really is a first time for everything, I'm sure you'll agree. There's a third piece of cannon fodder we've got to it was just casually hiding behind a wheelie bin, right next to a pump action shotgun. Honestly, why am I even wasting my time trying to save this guy? But whatever, you know Daryl's the good guy. And now with three measly people saved, we've got to clear out C block. But it's a real pain in the arse that these bastards have just left their wooden crates blocking the entrance. Honestly, it's just a health and safety accident waiting to happen. And you may now also note this, shotgun, absolute beast. Which really does make me wonder if it was glitched the last time I played. Oh, look at that. Why have we got grenade walkers in our prison? Jesus Christ. It seems clear to me that Woodbury was actually an Al-Qaeda sleeper cell. I take out the remains of C-Block and clip myself a machine gun. And now Daryl's goal is simple. Investigate the other areas. I find a room full of walkers and let's be honest, why dick about when you're carrying a homemade grenade? Cracking shot, I'm sure you'll agree. I then enter the room to investigate and there's just one big guy trapped behind a wheelie bin. So I drop a homemade grenade I found in the canteen, then well and truly light the bastard up. Let him up, 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 let him up, up, up. Oh my Jesus, where the fuck did you come from? And now seen as I'm panic, the only thing I can do is bloody leg it. However, I find myself trapped in a dead end. And with a fat guy blocking the entrance, there's only one way out. R.I.P. Daryl, I guess. Nah, I'm just kidding. I spawn back into the room with all the door sealed and zombies just snapping in. But as you probably figured out, I'm an absolute beast with any kind of explosive. I can then properly and cheekily take down the big guy behind the wheelie bin. Ah, there we go. The second fatty then enters the room, and I can appropriately deal with him. Oh god, what the hell was that? What's happening to his face? But unfortunately, after all this walker slaying, it seems that Daryl has become infected. With the flu, that is, let me clarify. Don't worry, I will do everything in my power to keep Daryl Dixon alive. Shane tells Maggie to sort out some antibiotics. Meanwhile, Shane is gonna head back to his hometown to loot the police station. Episode 20... Wait, what? Days gone by! Oh, great, just another bug in this game. Wouldn't have it any other way. Shane starts sneaking about his old town, stealthing zombies as he goes. But inevitably, whenever I'm involved in some kind of stealth plan, something is inevitably gonna be blown up. And I am then inevitably spotted by a sniper. And it's Morgan, the guy who saved Rick at the beginning of the game or show. And now he's an expert marksman who'll never miss a shot. <laughs> I am a tactical genius, Morgan. You will never kill me. Well, to be fair, he doesn't need to. Just soften you up enough that the walkers can do the job for him. Just, just, you just get stuck because you can't fucking do anything because the game's stupid. It doesn't let you use the controller. And I swear to God, even if I get a whiff of the phrase skill issue in that comment section, I will not be held responsible for my actions. So in my previous attempts, I was trying to play things smart and stealthy, taking out the walkers as I come across them. But that just meant they'd build up faster than I could take them down and inevitably I took too much damage from Morgan. Morgan sniper rifle. So as is typical with this game, your best bet is just to simply leg it to your destination. Just sprint as fast as you can and avoid any and all walkers. I get to the building that Morgan's hiding out in, and basically at this angle he can't get a shot off at me. It also turns out to be a fat bastard the game wants me to fight, but I'm like, nah, I'm alright mate, how about you get me to that exit point please? Morgan and Shane can then have this showdown. Morgan's like, run away you dodgy bastard, I don't trust you. And Shane's like, I bet I think you knew my buddy Rick. Then Morgan's like, oh my god Rick, it's been so long, what a legend! How's the handsome 
fucking bastard doing? Then Shane's like, uh, yeah, he sound bad, yeah. Any chance I could borrow a couple of guns, big man? And Morgan's like, I sound, yeah, no problem, but we then jump back to HQ in the West Georgia Correctional Facility. And for once, it seems everybody's getting along perfectly fine. No bickering and no group conflicts to resolve. Although Beth is sobbing in the corner. Seems upset. I'm not getting into that. Episode 22, This Sorrowful Life. And basically, Glenn, Michonne and Maggie have headed to their local supermarket to pick up some veterinary antibiotics. And no, that is not a joke. But what is a joke is how broken this fucking game is. You simply cannot melee attack while holding the sledgehammer. And even when I retreat and pick up the baseball bat, it still won't let me attack. Um, the game's glitched, chat. Which means Glenn dies in pretty funny circumstances. It won't let me swing the bat. I spawn back in to give it another try. Yeah, the sledgehammer's broken in this game, chat. Look, I'm doing science right now. Sledgehammer breaks the game. I'm sure you'll agree that was a very scientific approach. And now it's time for Glenn to crack on and find some, like, dog dewormer or something. I then try to collect something off the shelf that looks like it should be collected. But the game's like, nah, but I don't think so. Not ready, not ready. What do you mean you're not ready? How can you not be ready? Just grab the shit off the shelf, you prick. Anyway, I just start blasting. And with all the walkers taken care of, I try to loot the shelves. But apparently it's not actually to be collected, even though it glows when you're in instinct mode. I have a little look about, but can't find the medicine. So keep moving forward until I come across another grenade walker. Damn, man, it seems like West Georgia has a pretty serious domestic terrorism problem. Glenn does eventually find the medicine, but the game then fades to black and it seems like he's been kidnapped. Then we take over as Michonne who swapped the katana for the machete machine gun combo. She sneaks her way through until she gets spotted by a walker that isn't even in the bloody map. And as I'm sure you all know, walkers can't bend their knees. So I crawl my way under a piece of plywood and decimate everything from distance with the machine gun. I can then make my way upstairs and find the medicine that Glenn dropped. But guess what? Michonne also gets captured. I then finally take over as Maggie to find out what's been happening. Firstly, I sneak past a load of armoured walkers because why wouldn't I? They're stupid. That's when I come across a human enemy. And he is also very stupid. Like imagine coming across a woman in the apocalypse rocking military grade automatic machine guns. Meanwhile, you're only rocking a baseball bat and thinking, yeah, you know what? I can definitely win this. I can then carry forward but get a radio message from the governor. But that's uh, not an image of the governor. That is Rick's photo chat. This is what I mean, right? Not only is this game just terrible, but it doesn't even work. Ignoring the governor slash Rick, I head downstairs to look for Michonne. Can I lob that somewhere? Oh my god, they drop it from the sky! And they're very quick to rile up. But thank Christ for flimsy pieces of plywood, am I right? I climb on this. Oh, I am a tactical genius. I climb onto this as well. In fact, I don't need to be on the supermarket floor at all. That is definitely gonna break. Okay, I'm a moron. Don't listen to me. I drop down and find the medicine. Maggie then radio Shane saying she's got the meds, but Glenn and Michonne have been kidnapped. She's like, don't worry though, I'm going after them. But Shane's like, don't be daft, you silly twat. You need to get back here with our medicine or more people are gonna die. So we head back to the prison. You might recognise that blurry bastard stood in the foreground. Yeah, so even though Glenn's been kidnapped, he's still fancy turning up, I guess. That is a bloody committed employee. Fair play to him. And now it's time for the series finale. Too far gone. With Glenn and Michonne captured, a showdown with a former Woodbury leader is inevitable. Since losing his town, he has formed a new community of followers to execute his retaliation. And to make matters worse, he also controls a military tank. Now the survivors must stop him from taking away everything they've worked so hard to build. Ba -ba 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 That's right, T-Dog is holding Glenn and Michonne captive. But it's fair to say we probably shouldn't be having Shane as our negotiator. I'll tell you what, you turn your sorry ass around and go back to that rooftop in Atlanta where we left you and I'll pretend this never happened. Great work, Shane. I'm sure that'll de-escalate the situation. You got a tank? I'll burn this goddamn place to the ground myself before I let you set one foot on it. I then gotta make our final decision of the game. Can Glenn appeal to his sense of community? Or can Michonne convince him to stop the cycle of violence? Oh no. If I choose Glenn, does that mean Michonne dies? If I choose Michonne, does that mean Glenn dies? Ideally, I don't want anyone to die, but feel that Glenn might have a better chance of convincing him. And Glenn gives the most heart-wrenching speech a man can give with a katana to his throat. It's basically the same one that Rick gives in the mid-season finale of season four. We've all done awful things just to stay alive, but we're not too far gone. We can come back. We get to come back. I ain't hearing this shit. Well, that was rude. He killed Glenn! He killed Glenn! Bastard! The tank then penetrates our fences, and apparently it's Laurie's job to fight a bloody tank? I'm pretty certain this is the moment she wanted to hand in her feminism card. I know I said this last time, but the woman's just given birth like. Surely no one's gonna complain if she sits this one out. Rather, predictably, the woman with 15 stitches in a uterus can't take on a fully fledged tank. But when I respawn, I'm no longer Laurie. Oh well, time to strap in. We are now fighting a war with the ghost of Carol Peltier. Take your audio you want your little 
bastards! But I'm ashamed to admit that Carol dies for the second time. But just like Easter Sunday, guess who's back? And this time she just blasts the tank from distance. Completely out of range from the tank shells, and too far away for T-Dog's men to do anything. We've defeated the tank, are you serious? <laughs> Even though it was quite clearly defeated by the ghost of an old woman, the tank continues forward. And now it's Daryl's turn to stop it. Armed with one bloody crossbow bolt, may I add? Alright, make that zero. He moves through the tall grass like a velociraptor, eliminating all of T-Dog's little bitches. He then drops a grenade down the tank's big ol' shaft. But well, that turns out to be barely an inconvenience for T-Dog. It didn't even singe his new hairline. Then we finally get the face off that literally nobody asked for. Shane versus T-Dog. Two characters I'm not even sure spoke to each other in the show, but here they are battling it out for your amusement. I even get to wield Michonne's katana. Well, for a little bit at least. Like genuinely, it won't it won't even let me a fight! This is what I mean by this stupid fucking game. Anyway, I completely and utterly decimate the bloke first time. No, shut the fuck up. Don't go watch the full stream. Big Dog Shane then just flat out decapitates T-Dog. R.I.P. T-Dog, I guess. We then become Michonne, who somehow has got back her katana, and is also very deep within the prison, despite being T-Dog's hostage like two minutes ago. But anyway, Michonne's job is a simple one. Find a path through the fire. That fire is solid object, right? Gotcha. Who'd have guessed that Michonne wasn't fireproof? Anyway, I find my way through the flames and make it to the tower. Again, first time and everything. Oi, dickhead, I said not to watch the full live stream, alright? Michonne makes it to the top of the tower armed with a sniper rifle. Wait, Rick's back! Oh, great, more bloody ghosts, like. And what makes things worse is I've got to keep the bastard alive while sniping through flame. And if you've never seen any of my content before, sniping is not exactly my forte. But anyway, with Daryl, Shane, and maybe even Rick's ghosts perfectly safe, it's now Michonne's job to escape. Which I again do first time. were not even difficult, mate, I'm just a pro, like, you know? And with everything burning, our heroes escape. Michonne through the open fence. Merle jumping on the school bus. The governor is still alive? I thought Daryl cleared him out in the pits. And wait, Dale's still here? He hasn't had any screen time since, like, season two? Daryl, Maggie, and Beth all leave together, and Shane leaves with Laurie and little baby ass kicker. R.I.P. prison, I guess. We then get a tease for a potential sequel. Yeah, fuck it, alright. Sanctuary for all, community for all. Those who arrive, survive. And then we fade into the credits. And I'm guessing some silly twat must have been using autocorrect. Unless I've been playing Wolkine Dead Destinies. What an absolute shit show. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And let me know in the comment section if you'd actually like to see me play the Telltale Walking Dead games.